Okay, I'll speak loudly. Um, hi everyone, thanks for coming out. Uh, my name is Mitchell Scott. I'm with the Very Good Butchers. We're a vegan butcher shop out of Victoria, BC. Um, so what is a vegan butcher shop? Uh, well, basically we butcher beans, we butcher veggies, we butcher herbs and spices, and we create a variety of delicious uh, plant-based meat alternatives. So that's stuff like sausages, pepperoni, roast beast, steak, ribs, uh, and of course burgers. Now, speaking of burgers, this is a four pack of our very good burgers. Uh, it costs us three seventy four dollars uh, per unit to make. Uh, we retail it for around eleven fifty, dollars um, So we've got a pretty good margin there. Um, and you know, there's definitely ways to improve that moving forwards. Um, there's a lot of kind of benefits to a vegan or a plant-based diet. Um, so there's health, environmental, ethical. Uh, our whole approach is we want to make veganism familiar, approachable, uh, and delicious, um, and kind of appealing to everyone. So we got our start at the Denman Island Farmer's Market about two years ago. Uh, that's my co-founder on the, the right there, James. Um, so him and his wife, Tanya, uh, were making these products in their kitchen. Uh, they took them to the local farmer's market there, um, and people loved them. Uh, they were selling out every weekend. So they spent the whole week you know, making these products, sell them out every weekend. Uh, and that's when I got the chance to try the products. Uh, I was blown away by how delicious they were. Um, and yeah, we decided to team up. Uh, one of our first events was a little pop-up Christmas market in Victoria, at the Victoria Public Market. Uh, so we showed up there with some coolers set up at a table uh, over two days. And once again, you know, there was just an incredible response. People really loved what we were doing. Um, and while we were there, we noticed that they had a full-time retail space available. Um, and then, you know, they kind of encouraged us to, to take a look at it. So we took a look. Uh, we liked the space and we decided to go for it. Um, so two months later, uh, we opened the first vegan butcher shop on the west coast of Canada. Um, we actually had over a thousand people turn up for our opening day. We actually had to shut down for a week after that just to restock everything. Um, since then, we've just been str struggling to kind of keep up with the demand for our products and grow and scale up. Um, we launched a Kickstarter campaign last summer where we raised $64,000 from 700 different backers. Uh, we used a lot of that money to expand into a new, bigger, better space. Uh, so still in the same market, but just a lot better, a uh, lot bigger. Uh, we expand our production, expand our hot food menu. Um, our concept is similar to like a, a traditional butcher shop. So you can come in and get your meat. We'll uh, slice it up for you, serve it by the 100 grams. We've got some, you know, vegan cheeses as well. Um, and we also have like a, a fast, casual counter service restaurant attached to it. Um, so that's all featuring our products. So it's burgers, deli sandwiches. We do vegan mac and cheese, poutine, um, basically comfort food. Um, and that's been kind of a, a great, you know, marketing tool for us. Um, so that's kind of where we're currently at. Um, moving forward, uh, we've got a three-pronged strategy for growth. Uh, so that's direct sales. So that's in our butcher shop, that's farmer's markets, that's e-commerce and pop-ups. Uh, we want to get a, a food truck on the road fairly soon as well. Um, that's also wholesale is the second prong. Um, currently, we do have a very limited wholesale program. Uh, so we're at a handful of restaurants uh, and independent grocery stores, um, but really not many at all just because we can't make enough product, right? We, to not make enough product to meet demand. Uh, we've got a waiting list of about a hundred different stores and restaurants uh, who've reached out to us and want to carry and want to carry our products. Uh, we've also had a lot of franchise interest. So that's something we're going to look at in the future uh, once we've uh, expanded our production. Uh, in our first year, we did uh, $850,000 of sales. Um, so we're a, a year and four and a half months old right now. So we're still pretty young. So the first year we did 850 K uh, so far in the past four and a half months, we've done around 500 K in sales. So we're, growing at a pretty good clip. Um, we also recently launched something called the Monthly Meat Club. It's basically a subscription box product. So you can order online uh, and you get a box of delicious vegan meat delivered to your door every month. Uh, the box is slightly different each month uh, to keep things fresh. Um, and we also offer local pickup options in Vancouver, Nanaimo, Comox Valley. Uh, we've shipped out over a thousand boxes so far. It's only running for a few months. Um, and we've done very little marketing for this. We had Two uh, big Facebook pages kind of picked up the story and they did some videos which went viral. And um, we haven't really done anything other than that just because we can't, you know, we can't make enough products. Um, so yeah, I mean, moving forward, we see kind of these three prongs um, as our kind of revenue streams. Um, and if we can solve the big problem, which is being able to make enough product, uh, then we can kind of grow in all three areas. Now, what's really fueled this growth has been our active, engaged community. Uh, so we've got some awesome, awesome people supporting us. Uh, they're telling their friends about us. They're sharing our social media posts. They're leaving us reviews. 
Um, so we've been just really, really lucky. Um, and we, we do as much as we can to kind of give back to this, this community that's given us so much. Um, so we help out, you know, we support local anim, animal sanctuaries, we host events for them, and just really try to grow the whole community as a whole, educate more people, you know, just, uh, yeah, educate. Um, market has, the market's growing at a, a pretty, pretty rapid pace, especially over the past three to four years. Uh, more and more people are looking to reduce their, their meat consumption or, you know, give it up entirely. Um, and there are, you know, a few other companies in the space. So there's currently two vegan butcher shops in Canada. Uh, we're one of them. There's about six in the States. Uh, and then there's a n number of other companies making meat alternatives. Uh, we're of the opinion that a rising tide kind of floats all boats. The more companies in the space spreading the word, you know, getting people to try these alternatives, you know, letting them know that there's delicious options, uh, the better. And the market itself is just growing so rapidly right now. There's you know, absolutely enough room for everyone. That being said, um, I do think we have a few key advantages. Uh, the main one is of the quality of our products. Uh, so there's, or they're organic. We don't use any preservatives or we don't use any isolates. Um, they're made with real whole foods. So that's beans, veggies, herbs and spices, a bit of wheat flour to bind it all together, and that's it. Um, so they, you know, they taste really good. They've got a great nutritional profile. Um, and we've got a fairly strong kind of brand image identity. Uh, we've got kind of a high quality artisanal product, uh, but it's still affordable. So what is next for us? Um, well, our big project for this year uh, is to open up in Vancouver. Uh, we want to build a, a much larger production facility. Currently, um, we're, in, we're in the shop in Victoria. There's kind of a production kitchen in the back and a walk-in fridge and freezer. And it's just too small. Like, you know, we're still pressing burgers by hand. We're rolling sausages by hand. And it's just, you know, a lot of work. We really need a, a dedicated production facility. We need some bigger equipment, some bigger machinery. Um, by setting that up in Vancouver, we can also use that as the hub for our monthly meat club boxes. Um, so we're shipping them across North America. And if we ship them from Vancouver, then we get, you know, an extra day, which can be the difference between it arriving on a Thursday or Friday and it, you know, sitting in Canada Post all weekend and not arriving on, until Monday or Tuesday. Um, yeah, so we want to build a, a larger production facility in Vancouver and also open up a second retail uh, store slash restaurant, uh, similar concept to our Victoria location. Uh, we've had a ton of demand from Vancouver. I mean, people come over on the ferries all the time to see us. Uh, when we come over to Vancouver for pop-ups, we just get swamped. Um, so yeah, there's a, a ton of demand. Um, and once we have this kind of uh, larger production facility established, we can meet the existing demand for our products. Um, so that's you know, online sales, uh, some of the demand through wholesale, and then we can kind of continue expanding this production facility and growing. Um, so to do this, as you might have guessed, uh, we're looking to raise money on Front Funder. Uh, so we're looking to raise half a million dollars uh, on a convertible note. The Coming Soon page is live now, so you can log on there, you know, take a look, learn a bit more about us, what we're doing, you know, what our story is. And we're hoping to launch the full campaign uh, towards the middle to end of August. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to email me directly or give me a call. I'm also going to do a quick uh, Q&A now. I think there should be still some time. So yeah, Jasper, you want me to throw it back to you? Yes, here I am. Sorry, I was just dressing again because I had taken off my, uh, my jacket in the meantime because it's, it's very, very warm at the front of the HQ. Um, so in regards to questions, yes, let me fire up the Q&A box. So we have a question here. Um, the question says, I noticed that uh, $238,000 has been raised so far on FrontFunder um, of, of 10 mil. Uh, what happens if you only sell 500K? Of 10 mil? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, where, don't know where, the, where the 10 mil comes from. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we just put the, the coming soon page up on FrontFunder. Um, and people can reserve now. So they're not actually investing, they're just kind of clicking, this is how much I want to raise. Um, so our, our target raise is $500,000. Um, the minimum is 100,000 and the maximum is a million dollars. So because of the crowdfunding exemption we're using, we can raise 500,000 from non-accredited investors. Um, and then we're leaving some additional space uh, if any accredited investors want to jump on board. We've been talking to a, a number of uh, accredited investors as well. Um, so we've got a, some soft commits probably in the 300 to 400 K range. 
I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. And, and, and to clarify, um, you know, with, with front runner, so there is a difference between a target raise and a minimum raise. So, so let's say for sake of simplicity that a company has a target of, of, of $1 million. In addition to that target, companies can set a minimum. Now the minimum can be zero. That means that the company can close and collect the funds regardless of how much is being raised. If the company does set a minimum and these amounts are communicated on, on the raise page, uh, if they do set a minimum, that minimum needs to be met before they can close. Front funder, we hold all the funds into escrow. Um, so uh, once a company uh, hits that minimum, they can close and that's when we will release the funds from escrow. If they don't hit that minimum, we will return the funds to the investors. That, that's, that's, that's the way this, this works. Um, let's see, uh, Michel, what else? Um, can you explain what a convertible note is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's a, a, a way of an investing in a company. Um, basically we are still super young, so it's kind of hard to put a valuation on the company. Um, so what we're doing is we're delaying that conversation to the future. Um, so basically the convertible note is you invest your money. Um, it's a three year term at the end of the, that three years, um, the company is valued and then your investment converts into equity based on that valuation. Um, you also get interest every year and you get a, a discount. Um, there's kind of three main components to the convertible note. So the interest rate, um, the discount, and then the cap. Uh, so we're planning a seven and a half million dollar cap, uh, six percent interest and a 15 percent discount. Excellent. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mitchell. Um, so we have another question coming in uh, regarding uh, the very good butchers. Uh, do you expect your investment to be eligible for a registered plan? So T is a RSP. Yes. So yeah, we're going through the setup process uh, for both. Um, we will probably have to, so the, we're planning on having the minimum for the campaign be $250. Uh, so kind of almost anyone can get in on it. Uh, for the RSP TFSA, it'll probably have to be a little bit higher as there's some extra fees associated with that. Uh, but yes, it should be eligible. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, a subsequent question is, can you discuss potential exit strategies for your business, Mitchell? Yeah. Um, so there's a few, I guess, kind of scenarios. Um, so right now in the market, there's a lot of kind of these plant-based companies uh, getting bought up by much larger companies who kind of want to get some skin in the game. Um, so, I mean, that's something we'd be open to. It would have to be you know, a good fit for us culturally. Like we don't really want to be bought by one of those giant meat companies that we don't like very much. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's private acquisition is definitely a possibility. Um, timeline for that, I'd say between like three and eight years. I mean, we still have a lot of kind of growing and scaling up to do. Um, another option is to kind of stay private, stay profitable, issue dividends, um, or potentially look at, you know, um, going public. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, one thing to clarify, indeed, that is a comment that just came in and then sorry about that. That's something that I should have noticed, but it did not. Um, so, so, so the uh, uh, a question uh, about two or three questions ago mentioned 10 million. So that was, in fact, in regards to RER. So that was not in regards to the very good butchers at that, that, that 10 oh, mil. Okay, um, another question in regards to the very good butchers. When do you aim to go live? Because so, so to clarify for, for the for the attendees right now, uh, the difference between RER and, and the very good butchers right now is that RER is currently on our live page. So meaning that RER is currently accepting investments. Uh, you could go to our platform right now and within 12 minutes, uh, you could complete your investment. Uh, the very good butchers is curr currently on our coming soon page, uh, meaning that uh, a potential investor can currently follow the raise or they can reserve shares, but they can actually not complete their investment at this point. Um, so Mitchell, so, so when do you, when do you want to go live? Yeah. So we're, sorry, I'm just trying to keep the screen here. Uh, yeah. So we're targeting uh, towards the end of August to go live. So we've got the campaign video all set up. Uh, we're just basically finalizing some paperwork work with our lawyers and kind of double check and going over everything uh, to make sure we're properly set up. Okay, uh, excellent. Um, let's see. So I believe, um, let me check the chat box as well. Um, yes, I think we have had the questions right now. Uh, side note, so we at the front as part of our due diligence, so, so all of our companies go through our due diligence process. So we in fact have had a, a barbecue on the front of the patio with the very good butchers meat. Uh, well, vegan meat, and um, yeah, like I, uh, we, we liked it a lot, the team, so that was excellent. Uh, thanks for that, Mitchell. 